It's time for a Champions League takeaway here on Live School, and we are ready to dig deep into the two fascinating UCL semi final ties we have witnessed over the past couple of days. Both first leg encounters were totally absorbing. We're going to kick off with last night's clash in Paris as Manchester City came from behind to win 2 1 over PSG. It was a big, big win, Dean. It was, yeah, and I've got to admit, I did not see it coming um, at half time. It wasn't there. And the first takeaway from me is never doubt Pep Guardiola. Um, that City, they just didn't play like themselves at all in that first half, to be honest. The overloads weren't there. They weren't getting in behind and making those, those cutbacks we're so used to seeing. Everything about them was so unfamiliar. At half time, they'd had three shots, 53% possession. Both those stats are completely at odds with everything I've seen from Man City pretty much in every match this season. They seem to also lack a presence in the centre of their attack. And I, I saw on the TV analysis, former professionals saying, right, they need to change. KDB needs to change from this false nine role, go back. Sergio Aguero's needed. They need a focal point to this team. Anyway, Pep Guardiola, not interested in any of this. Didn't have the same feelings as anybody else watching the game. He cracked on with his plan. They always believe in their game plans. They never panic. Yeah, Pep's always right, isn't he? City then go on to play one of the best halves of football I've probably ever seen in my life. They've won 2-1 in Paris, and they have a massive opportunity to now go on and play the first ever Champions League final. Yeah, yeah, they do, they do. And let, let's pull the focus onto one player in particular, I think, Riyad Mahrez. He was absolutely amazing. He's actually been one of the more underrated players at City this season, I'd say. I mean, we've definitely seen Cancelo take the limelight. Ruben Diaz has had his his praises sung. Then you've got Phil Foden emerging. You've got Kevin De Bruyne. You've got Ilkay Gundogan's goal spur. All along, Mara has just been trucking along. And even when the, the storylines haven't been positive, it's been about negatives. It's been about, oh, where's Raheem Sterling's finishing touch? Where's the love for Mares? Well, we're going to give Mares the love right now because he was fantastic. This was all about him. And it wasn't just that he was getting into great positions and, and working Michel Baca. I actually thought City could have done more in the first half to get Mares the ball much more. But he managed, also managed to track back and, and make some incredible tackles. There was one in the box as well that prevented a shot on goal from very close range that Neymar was screaming for a penalty for, but it was a clean tackle. I mean, Mares. It's like Kante, he was everywhere, wasn't he? From the night before, it was incredible. But look, recently it has all been about Phil Foden. And we've sat here and we've sung Foden's praises. His emergence has been amazing. But last night was Mahrez's night. And of course, he scores that second goal. The goal we think is going to be the killer goal from the free kick. It's a little bit lucky, but you do earn your luck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, heading into this game, we wondered how PSG would manage the game. They were petulant in the second half and they lost their way. But let's not focus on that because I prefer the joyful side of football. And actually, they were unbelievable at times in the first half, weren't they? The interplay had you know me just sitting there smiling away. Some of the things that Neymar were doing were borderline illegal. Like, I think as a takeaway, we should acknowledge that this team have had such a tough route to the final. If PSG were to win the league or win the Champions League after escaping a group with Manchester United, Leipzig, then beating Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Manchester City and one of Chelsea or Real Madrid, would we be calling them the most deserved winners of this competition ever? Um, maybe. And you add to that the fact that they've bounced back from losing a Champions League final last season, which hurts. It really, really hurts. And if they were to win it, I, I mean, I'd be happy to give them that crown, Jack. I don't know who's in charge of that. Are we, do we get that? Is that our responsibility? I think we can or? do it, yeah. It's ours yeah, now. Yeah, okay. Well, then I'll do it. It's fine. I'm happy to do that. But though, right now, the likelihood is that I won't have to get that crown out because it doesn't look likely. You know, City, ugh, that second half, as Dean says, it was just, it was immaculate football. And, and PSG could barely get a kick. City were just pinging it about with ease. Those overloads came back into play. And if City do that again in the second leg, if they start with that intensity and that sharpness and just don't let PSG touch the ball... What can PSG do here? I'm not reinventing the wheel to say that if you don't have the ball, you can't score a goal. Yeah, no, it's true. And it is going to be an uphill battle for PSG. But if they do get to the final, they could well be facing their former boss, Thomas Tuchel. Chelsea went to Madrid and took home a one-all draw, which is great for them. But it could and maybe should have been even better. They played very, very, very well, especially in the first half. And yet, for the past 24 hours or so, most people have been pointing the finger at Timo Werner as the man to blame for not actually winning the game. They have been, yeah. Do you know what? There's good reason for that because he's missed 
another sitter. And look, there's no wonder Tammy Abraham wants to leave Chelsea this summer. He's sitting there, not getting a look in, wondering how many of these chances over the past month or so he would have converted and Werner is missing almost all of them. A takeaway from the game has to be, really, can you trust Timo Werner to deliver a trophy, the biggest trophy there is in football, in that final if Chelsea get there? If they get a big opportunity, it falls to Timo Werner, is he going to take it? don't think he is. I mean, we all saw him at Leipzig. We know this is a player who does not convert all of his chances. Um, and when you are a 50 odd million pound player joining Chelsea, that expectation changes and you have to basically start taking those opportunities or you won't be considered good enough for that stage. I think there's even a question here over whether he can play in the second leg, to be honest. Yeah, I think if he plays in the second leg, I think he has to go back to the flank. Uh, I just... I'm not on board with the idea of Werner as a central striker in the lone position. I, I never have been, for the record, even back at Leipzig. You know he played with a target man. He played as part of a two or he played off the left. That's also where he's probably played his better football for Germany as well. So, look, after this poor performance and another sitter missed, it's really hard to get on get on board with the idea that he should be playing up front on his own, you know, leading the line, as Dean says. When, the, when that one chance falls to him, is he going to take it? I mean, Timo Werner of old, possibly. The Timo Werner I see right now, no way. So if I look, if I were Tuchel, which you know, as you guys know, I'm not, uh, I'd put Havertz in. And if it wouldn't be Havertz, it would be Tammy. Although Tuchel and I disagree because he'd put Juru in front of Tammy, wouldn't he? Yeah, I'm, I mean, surely Tuchel can be trusted. He's been yeah. unreal in his management of this side since coming in. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, so far he's faced Mourinho, Simeone, Jurgen Klopp. Carlo Ancelotti, Pep Guardiola, and now Zinedine Zidane as Chelsea boss and lost zero of those games. Yeah, I mean, look, we are in no position, no position at all to doubt this man whatsoever. And bar one freak afternoon against West Brom, he's pretty much had the Midas touch. Everything he's turned his hand to has gone to gold. And the tactical organisation of this team is genuinely stunning. A system that he has created that prioritises control over possession and territory. No wonder it's working wonders when you've got to play a game every three days. The players are just falling back into their, their sync patterns and they're just playing the way they know they have to. The training sessions are clearly doing a very good job of preparing these players for playing the same game over and over again because they keep winning 1-0 and stuff like that. And look, I guess it's probably no surprise if you think about it that we're staring a Tuchel versus Pep final at the Champions League in the face. Both these managers fall back on very similar principles. And with a crunch of games due to the pandemic, this is the sort of system that wins. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. Dino, let's turn to Madrid and look at their chances of getting through. Of their last five games in all competitions, they've drawn 3 0 0 drawn one all with Chelsea, and their one win has come against Cadiz in a 3 0 victory. W what's going on? I mean, it might sound harsh, but maybe they're just not actually that good. Um, this is their fourth dodgy patch of the same season, and that is very un-Madrid. It's also very un-Madrid to not hit form when these trophies are up for grabs. You know, the fact that they're even still in there fighting for something like the Champions League seems pretty mad after this year. Um, but that's where we're at with this present team. They are consistently inconsistent. And I keep hearing over the past 24 hours that, you know, Chelsea might have missed their chance here to make the final because there are people keep saying, I've heard it on the radio, on TV, they're saying Chelsea, uh, sorry, Real Madrid definitely will not play this badly again in the second leg. Where's the proof of that? I mean, Madrid have underperformed so many times throughout this season. What they do need to do is to produce a game plan like the one we saw against Barcelona a few weeks ago when they when they won 2-1 in a big game. It is possible, but it's not probable. I make Chelsea the favourites to go through to the final. Yeah, look, Madrid beat Liverpool and they beat Liverpool because they won the midfield battle and they worked the space in behind. And it was more down to Liverpool's failings than anything else that that game was won by Madrid. OK, mm -hmm. Liverpool missed a lot of chances in the second half and tactically... They fluffed it in the first leg. That, that's basically how that's basically how it worked. And Chelsea won the midfield battle against Madrid, and they had no they left no space in behind for Madrid to work. So Vinicius Junior fades out the game. It becomes a one man show for Karim Benzema. Just a one man show. One man can only do so much. I know he's a great man. I know he's Mercedes Benzema, but he is only one man. I think this tactical mountain is too much to climb for Zidane. 
Yeah, there's a lot to do. I just think it's mad to. No, I know you're not writing Madrid off, and but mm. the fact is, and and Dean put it there, right? They've they've had four bad patches this season, and yet they are still very much in the La Liga title race, and they are very much in the hunt for the Champions League. I think it's yes, they have had bad periods, and 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 look, the fact that they are still in these, you know, in these competitions, with those bad periods all said it means that there is something deeper here that Madrid can go to. Now, I agree. I make Chelsea favourites for this, but not by that much. Not a one-all and not with Karen Benzema on the pitch, frankly. So, so, so they were at. But one thing I am definitely pleased about is that our first leg was nowhere near as boring as Dean had predicted earlier this week. <laughs> uh, and that's a win for everyone as far as I'm concerned. And with that, that is very much a wrap. So make sure you keep checking the watch section here on Live Score for plenty more content ahead of the weekend. 